Hi everyone, I'm Todd Williams. I'm a horn player with the Stanton Music Festival. So the concept of the horn has been around for centuries. I mean, quite literally taking horns from animals, boring out the center, shaving off one of the sides. Now you have this funnel or this cone-like configuration. Now this, this horn is really used as a means of communication. The horn wasn't really considered a musical entity until the early 17th century, actually. The first horns that are considered musical instruments were almost exclusively fixed pitched single coiled instruments. Now that means from start to finish you have a mouthpiece here and a bell there. From start to finish you have one long continuous hoop. That means you can only play in one key at a time. Well, it didn't take long for performers to complain about this and, and instrument builders to come up with new concepts of actually wrapping the instrument on itself and cutting part of the brass, thus creating a crook. Now this hoop of brass, or a crook, determines the key. The, re the remainder is the corpus, or the body of the instrument. The corpus is stationary, the crook can alter the overall length of the instrument, thus harmonic series, or what we hear. Using good basic brass technique, using a combination of airspeed and muscle tension, and your predetermined length of pipe, you have the harmonic series. Now you can hear along the way there are several gaps. These gaps or intervals really uh, deem how our music is written. In that lowest register, there's not much we can do musically. We tend to avoid that register in the Baroque period. But the next octave, we sort of have a functioning triad with a basic arpeggio with, with an out-of-tune seventh. We could play some fanfares, maybe some harmonies, but not much else. But the next octave, suddenly we have nearly every note of the diatonic scale, including some semitones. This is my main instrument for all repertoire prior to 1750, essentially. Around the 1750s, horn players figured out if you place your hand inside the bell, you can start to fill in some of these gaps. And the uh, basic construct remained the same, but some other alterations really came into play. You could see we have the corpus concept and we have the crook concept, but now we have these additional hoops called couplers. So we have the crook, coupler, and corpus system. This will lower the overall sounding pitch of the instrument even more. But, but the harmonic series concept remains the same. Now, as the instrument evolved a little more, um, this is probably my most used horn. This is, uh, and my most advanced horn, insofar as we have a tuning slide. <laughs> it was a great day for the horn. <laughs> this horn, I, I really love the most. It's so versatile in, in all of my historically informed performances. Um, as you can see, the body is essentially the same. We still have a crook, and we also use couplers when necessary. We have a tuning slide, but now the bell is wider, and larger, rather, and the bell throat is wider we gain even greater nuance with a larger bell throat, this section right in here. Uh, for example, the same harmonic series. Now, if you place your hand inside the bell, you can start to fill in some of these gaps. Etc. Now, if you have a more careful hand position, you can actually play a fully diatonic scale. Fast forward a few years, as 
techniques really advanced and composers are really exploring chromaticism for the horn. If you, if you place your hand slightly farther inside the bell and pay careful attention to intonation, you can now achieve a fully chromatic scale. And plenty of composers understood this and really highlighted this. For example, this is the horn I used when we performed Beethoven's Eighth Symphony, the, the minuet, the trio of the minuet as uh, something like this. And each note has its own unique color, its own unique color or timbre. And the timbral differences of this horn versus our beloved valve horn, and I really do love the valve horn, <laughs> those timbral differences are lost when you perform that music on this horn, because that music wasn't written for this horn. The purpose of the valve is to create a more even, consistent sound, a more unified, homogeneous sound. And I love the horn, but these subtleties, the, the modern valve horn, excuse me, but these subtleties are lost when you're performing works by, for example, uh, Schubert's Unfinished Symphony. The opening of that symphony calls for the horn to enter on a closed note with an accent, which creates a specific sound. This this Gestopf or Boucher effect really has this um, the metallic sound and it cuts through the orchestra and it absolutely creates atmosphere. You learned a little something. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next summer at the Stanton Music Festival. Thank you.